back, Amateur County. We're here to talk about the Chowda Chomp. We've got two gentlemen from the uh, Union. We start with some introductions. I'm Brad Kenoyer. I'm the general manager of the Volcano Union Inn and Pub. And I'm Micah Malcolm. I'm the chef at the Union Inn and Pub. Okay. How long have you been a chef, Micah? Uh, about 10 years now. Really? Working in the industry for about 10 years. Uh, technically a chef for about two and a half. Wonderful. He started when he was about six. Yeah. I was, was going to say. I was really young, really, really young. I was going to say, like in kindergarten, yeah. you started. <laughs> young looking kid. All right, tell us about your chowder. All right, so we're actually going to do a little demo here today. Um, what I'm going to start by doing is uh, rendering off some of the bacon here. Uh, rendering is bringing out uh, the fat out of our bacon. Uh, okay. We're going to use that to create our roux. We're going to use that smokiness that comes off of the bacon itself to kind of help out the whole process. And I see here. you're using a thicker slab. Uh, yeah, we use a nice thick cut. Um, smoked? Smoked applewood, smoked. Uh, it's going to bring out a little bit more flavor uh, and intensify the whole thing. We want to build la layers of flavor uh, in the whole dish. Good. So we're going to start by heating up our pan. Right, I'll, so I'm going to let you, you go switch? There. I'll switch, we'll switch. With you. So there you, you can go. do that. Um, at the same time, I have uh, we steam some manila clams to make our own uh, clam juice. So we're actually cooking our potatoes in the clam juice. Oh, great. That way we kind of infuse a little bit more flavor into the potatoes. At the but the final product has a little bit more flavor versus trying to cook the potatoes in the whole dish, where it just kind of picks up certain flavors. We can pick up the flavor we want uh, out of the uh, Good idea. clam juice themselves. Right. Now that you say that, I, when I think of clam chowder, I think that the potatoes taste very bland, and now they right. Yeah. And now they don't. Now, now they, now they don't. No. <laughs> no. 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 So it's very important to go into a nice warm hot pan. That way you pull out that fat very fast and efficiently. You can get like a nice caramelization on right. the bacon. Uh, it's very important, like when you do any kind of soup, chowder, whatever it might be, that you make everything the same size. So we, but when we cut our bacon, we want to make sure that our bacon is a little bit bigger than everything else. That way, when it renders out, it becomes the same size as our onion, carrot, our onion, celery, and potato. Right. Plus, it gives a. Uh it, it makes the cooking time so much easier if everything is at the same Yeah, that is correct. Same size. Yeah. You know, that way you can control consistency. Uh, everything, you, you kind of know how long it's going to take to cook. If it's all cut rough and weird, you don't really know. You know, if you want it to be big and uh, chunky soup, then it can be that way by just making everything the same size. Instead of making, like, the potatoes large, everything else small, right. make the potatoes big, everything else big as well. Right. Oh, you can start smelling that. That, good yeah. Yeah. that bacon. nice bacon aroma. That's the part they're missing on yeah. the other yeah, end of the camera. Yeah, they need huh? smell-o-vision. Smell-o-vision, one of these days, right? Yeah. We're almost there. Yeah. You bet. <laughs> All right. So at this point, when it's, like, about 80% rendered, we're going to add our uh, celery and onion. You realize you're, you're having a, a chowder contest and you're giving away some secrets. Well, that's why we didn't give you the recipe. Okay. Exactly. I'm not telling you how much I'm putting in. There you go. I'm not talking about that at all. We're all just kind of showing you a little bit of technique here. There you go. Yeah. I'm not trying trying to give it away too early. Right. How many people do you have competing in the uh, contest? Uh, right now I have verbal agreements from about a dozen of our Amador County restaurants. Okay. Um, I really think it is going to be a best of the county contest, which is pretty exciting because it's also voted on by the people tasting the chili, the residents of the county. And so, Brad, is it all just, is it the white, is it just the, uh, the, uh, It's open to any kind of chowder that you'd like Manhattan? to prepare. Manhattan? Yep, anything that people want to do. Yeah. Uh, vegetarian, other, you know, I think last year there were a couple of corn chowders. Really? Um, corn, salmon chowder. Yeah. Really? Uh, all ah. different styles. Some Whatever you'd like to stuff. do. Uh, you know, at the Union, we really pride ourselves on, uh, you know, using local, fresh ingredients, you know, sustainability is what we're really about. Um, and the other important thing, too, is just the, the local, you know, people's input. We've been trying chili now for, or not chili, but chowder, rather, for a couple of weeks. And uh, we've been working our recipe just using our, our guests as our barometer, which, is, which is awesome, you know. Great. It really is. Best, best uh, you can have. Well, and, and you know, our our uh, our guests give us a really, they're the ones that give us the most honest feedback on stuff. Sure. You know, and uh, if we can make them happy, we know we're doing the right thing. Yep. Yeah. Now, Michael, do you use fresh clams? I do. Uh, can I people actually, use canned if they if Yeah, you know, if you available? feel that you like to use uh, canned clams, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it, it's a good product. You can find good product. Uh, but we like to do steamed clams ourselves. That way we can sure. make our base the way we want it. We can add the right... Um, flavor profiles at the beginning versus trying to make it the way you want it at the end. A little garlic, fresh yeah. parsley. Uh, when I, I when I steamed them, I actually steamed them with a little bit of uh, celery, 
carrot, onion, the basic uh, mirepoix, as it's called. Right. Uh, then I put some fresh bay leaf in there and a couple other ingredients that we'll, you'll find out at the Chowder Chomp what they are. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I that's right. That I want. Don't give away all the secrets, product. my friend. Yeah. <laughs> so when we make our chowder, we like to use a gluten-free flour. That way we oh, can, uh, a lot of people don't use that, and a lot of people can't have chowder anymore because they're gluten-free, and we like to make sure that all of our guests can have, you know, what we serve. And there really isn't that, that much of a different taste. No, they, uh, they have, uh, well, you know, some, some gluten-free flours are grainy. Others can uh, you know, impart like a certain flavor, mm -hmm. but we like to use uh, this stuff that we, we get, um, uh, it's, it's called cup per cup, so we can transfer our regular all-purpose flour by, into this cup per cup flour, that it's exactly the way we want oh, it. Oh, great. So once we make bacon fat and we add our gluten-free flour, we're going to go ahead and pour nice and slowly into that our clam juice and potatoes. This will thicken it up, get that nice... Make like a little roux? Like a, making the roux and adding our clam juice to it. That smell that's coming off is just really oh, nice. Oh, it's great. It's, it's got a great smell. It's one of the best smells in the room this today. Yeah. <laughs> and our potatoes are already cooked. Uh, so they're already ready to go. At this point, we just have a nice thick base. Everything is getting combined and seasoned. We're going to go ahead and pour on a little bit of our cream, which gives it that nice silkiness. Now, you use 100% pure cream. Manufacturing cream, yes. Okay. The highest uh, heavy? milk fat heavy mm -hmm. cream, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at and this. And there you go. Wow. Starting to look just like chowder here. We like to leave that fresh bay leaf in. So it just imparts a lot more flavor. By leaving the stem on, we can just pull it out nice and easily instead of trying to have to look for it uh, later. Sometimes people overdo it with bay. Bay leaf has a, uh, a very distinct taste, and sometimes mm -hmm. it can be overwhelming. Yeah. So it's you've got to learn how to uh, back off a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to go ahead and add the, our chopped manila clams that we pulled out of the shell earlier this morning. And then just let this sit. Ah, uh, the boys are already making yummy noise. <laughs> yeah. right. here. Is the competition right. only open to restaurants or individuals open to We are, um, we are uh, inviting locals as well, some, uh, family, mom and pop types. Um, there are some requirements they need to do to participate in a uh, event like this, but we have all the guidelines from the county. Okay. So I have all the information on our... If they want to contact me through our website, okay. uh, it's, uh, the email is hello at Volcano Union, and I can give them all the information they need. Great. The more the merrier. We're really trying to make Great. this a big countywide event. Good. Uh, it's for charity. It's for the Volcano Scholarship Fund. So, you know, we feel like it's a great thing to support. Absolutely. The money stays in the community. It's going to an, uh, uh, a youth in the county that needs help to go to an accredited school. Perfect. So what better cause is there than that? Uh, right. you now, know. now, Micah, let me ask you a question. If if someone likes their chowder a little thicker, can you add more of the flour to it now and make it a little thicker? Or would uh, that give at, it too much? Well, you wouldn't just taste? throw the flour in. What you would do is make your another a roux. roux. Yeah, and that way when you put it in there, you can incorporate it. It won't okay. just be like a grainy piece of flour. Yeah, flour, you could you could add it, and it would be like thickness. But then you'd but have that flour Gritty, taste. grainy. Yeah. You make the roux on the side, and it allows the flour to cook out. Okay. And the last thing we do to finish it is just a little bit of fresh thyme. Very good. It's that time. From it is that garden. time. <laughs> this is straight out of our garden. Uh, going into the winter, we're going to lose that kind of uh, essence there, but... We had some left, so I grabbed it. Wonderful. Now, if, if time is not available, uh, can you put something else on? Uh, we can get dried thyme. Dried thyme. Oh, uh, it'd be people, okay. Yeah, you know, it's just it, it's a little more pungent of a flavor. Uh, Got to give it a little. A little bit of a rub. Put yeah. it in there, depending on how long it's been on your shelves. Who knows? Right. You know, uh, my shelves at home are hardly touched, so it might be back way in the yeah. back. But uh, yeah, it's just well, ready say, to go. Well, they say what is it? Every three to six months, you should uh, check. change it out. Change yeah. it should out. Rechange your time. Hey, Sorry, all your spices. We're out of time. we got to run to an ad break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. No time. Cheers. Irish Hoffman at Jackson Ranch Rio Casino.